We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. I know you guys must like at this time of the year care so much about you know how to get into the college that you want um, and the ins and outs of college applications and things like that. And I'm here to try to give you some idea of how that you've watched my college reaction video and like where I got into and now I'm about to tell you what my stats are and like how I think I got in. I actually don't really know, I'm just very confused how I got in to some of the schools that I did get into. But um, I'm just here to give you an idea of what I did and like the end result. Also stay tuned, um, I will tell you which college I'm choosing to attend in like two weeks I think. Oh my god, okay, this is like a lot. Anyways. Back to the content. So first of all is classes and grades. I'm not a student who takes a lot of AP classes and things like that. I mean the low that I have written on here I don't think it's a lot compared to like a lot of the other students in my school. Um, so I took a total of 12 AP classes. I have two sophomore year, three junior year, and seven senior year because like our school didn't allow us to take AP classes during freshman year and we were only offered AP classes. We didn't have IBs or anything like that. I think a general trend that is very good for like college admission officers to see is definitely an upward trend on like anything, on like classes, on like the rigor or like the workload of classes you take, as well as like your grades obviously. So I took two, three, seven from sophomore to senior year and um, I think that's a positive. <laughs> so they see that like I'm adding more and more on my workload and seeing that like my potential to like take advanced and advanced and like more rigorous classes is increasing, which is good. Specifically, I took AP Chem, AP Seminar sophomore year, AP Bio US History, sorry, um, and Research junior year. AP Research and AP Seminar are actually part of a relatively new program that, um, uh, sorry, and my mind just kind of blinked. College Board <laughs> developed the AP Capstone program. It's a two-year program and basically it centers on like how to do research and looking at like how to culminate like a research paper from previous research and academia around you. And I took AP Calc BC. So I went like all AP senior year um, because I felt comfortable with it. So obviously a good tip is to not overload yourself with too much work because everyone's schedule is different, everyone's extracurriculars are different, everyone's like plans are different. So definitely take your comfortable with. So my grades, my handy dandy transcript. Woo. I'm just going to tell you my GPA. So our GPA is obviously like weighed according to um, like the rigor of classes you like. Honors and APs, they add like a 0.5 or something. I'm not too sure how it works, but it's just the weight is larger if you take either an honors or an AP course. Freshman year for both semesters, I caught 4.5 GPA. That's because I took a few honors classes. I got 4.57 on my GPA through sophomore year. That's also partially because I didn't choose to take AP World History sophomore year. And it was because like I thought it was like I didn't like history. Um, I thought it wasn't really correlating to the major I wanted to go to at that point, which was like kind of between biochem and bioengineering. Um, I didn't think it was necessary. Turned out I didn't think it was necessary um, still. So yeah, up to you. So 11th grade, I had a 4.83 GPA all throughout, straight A's again. And then um, senior year, I had a 5.0 GPA, finally, um, because I took all APs. So that was through all semesters as well. So yeah, that's also a good tip to have an upwards trend in GPA and grades as well if you can. You don't have to have all like straight A's from the start like freshman year. As long as you work up and build up your grades and make them better and better and show that you have improvement and an upwards trend, um, I think the college admission officers really look positively on that. 
test scores, woo! The first time that I officially took my SAT, I took it with the essay, uh, with the essay, sorry. Um, I got a 1500, I got a 710 on the reading and writing part, and then a 790 on the math portion. Um, I think I took it... Yeah, beginning of junior year, that makes more sense. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, it's like 12 a.m. Okay, um, and then I improved the next time I took it, which is the second semester of junior year. Um, I got a 1530, I guess it's a tiny improvement, and I felt like that was the most that I could like actually improve with like how I'm studying and how I'm working on it. Um, so I got a 730 reading writing and 800 on the math portion. So yeah, I felt like anything else that I could have done wouldn't have really improved it by a significant amount. What I mean by a significant amount is like I think at least 30 points. Like to be honest, 10 to 20 points is not a significant difference that like college admission officers would really care about. Um, 10 to 20 points is only like one to two questions. So honestly, like do not worry about the tiny differences that are in scores. Um, to be very honest, I think that if you're aiming for like the higher ranked colleges, I guess, like the more elite slash like lower acceptance rate colleges, um, I think you should like target towards a threshold of getting at least like a 1500 or so. As long as you make it through that threshold, based on what I've seen like with upperclassmen and like other friends, um, you'll be fine. Because honestly the SAT does not stand a large portion of your admission chances and like your admission profile. So do not spend and do not obsess over like having to get a particular score on your SAT or getting like a 1600. Also a good tip is to look at the specific college that you want to apply to and the past like statistics that they had for their enrolled students and look at their test scores. Try to hit the middle average or above average. Um, that's a good estimate for like what you should score. For SAT subject tests, I took Chinese with listening, because I'm Chinese, um, chemistry, math two, and bio molecular, with molecular section. I'm not proud, I must say, about my math two score. It's not what I wanted. I don't think it mattered that much. If you're confused about which SAT subject tests, since they're optional to take, definitely try to take math two. A lot of the colleges that you're going to apply to usually would require math two. Um, so just try to cover that base if you um, if you're applying to like more of the STEM colleges, but also I think a lot of the humanities colleges also may want it as well. I've seen a lot of colleges require it, so just cover that base just in case. Also look on the college's websites. They will tell you which tests that um, are required for submission of your application. Um, and then the other test, they mostly require like two subject tests. One of them is most mainly or usually is math too. The other one is either up to you or it's like another science or something like that. So just check your college to make sure. Definitely take subject tests in the subjects that you are the strongest in or the subjects that you are most interested in and most correlate to the major that you're planning to go into. Um, for me, that was bioengineering and something like biochem, so I took chem and molecular biology. The way that I studied for all of my SATs was to get Princeton reviews and practice, practice, practice. I didn't go to any tutoring classes because I just thought like studying by myself was the same exact thing. At tutoring classes, they just force you to do that over there. So I thought I would be more comfortable studying at home and I had like the self-control to make myself study like a certain number of hours each day or something like that. So if you also have the determination to do that, which I believe a lot of you do, um, you can save that uh, tutoring money to just like buy a couple of prep books here and there and just study up on all the content that's there because those are definitely going to be on the test and definitely find a lot of practice tests online. I might link a few of the links that I previously used, get those practice tests and get the practice in. 
um, and like a few of the prep books that I use, but I will honestly suggest Princeton Review and Barron's. Obviously, they're the most popular, and I believe they were, they were the most dependable and the most helpful for me. So part three is extracurricular. I personally believe that extracurriculars is the most, if not like the most, sorry. It is, it's 12 a.m. I'm so sorry. Okay. It is the most, in my opinion, important part of your college application and your resume and everything like that. Since freshman year, um, I kind of knew that I was either going into, again, biochem or bioengineering. Since I wanted to go into more of bioengineering than I did biochem, um, I wanted to join a club that kind of reflected the engineering aspect because I didn't really have a lot of exposure to that. So I joined engineering club of my high school freshman year and they had officer applications open at that time. So I just thought, well, let's just maybe try, you know, um, it was a relatively new club, I think, at our school. So I tried out for the secretary position, got the position. Um, it was more of like a science fair coordinator but I just treated it as a secretary job because that's what my responsibilities were. Through that position, I was able to host um, science fairs every single year. Um, and I did that for all four years, no matter like what my position in that club was. I competed in the science fair for three years, freshman, sophomore, and junior year. I, like, I climbed my way up in engineering clubs, so then I became vice president and then co-president for the last two years. And then, I found because I found out that our school didn't have a science Olympiad team and I thought that we needed one because like another school in our district had a very advanced science Olympiad team so I thought it would be nice if I could found a science Olympiad team so that's what I did with a couple of friends who were also interested in the idea. I also joined NHS when I was in sophomore year National Honor Society. I tried out for VP in a lot of the other positions and I got VP for senior year so that was another like leadership officer position. All of those experiences were very 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 helpful with like communicating with other coordinators, um, communicating with teachers, trying to organize an event in school. I feel like the most helpful experience that I've had for extracurriculars is definitely my research internship. In summer and sophomore year, I just went online and looked up a bunch of summer programs and I basically worked in a lab and researched things related to like endothelial cells and things like that. Um, and I thought it was really interesting because it allowed me to start a new project in the lab. It also allowed me to like learn how to make a poster and how to present a scientific poster. I did not however finish the whole project because of some like delays and some uh, lab priority. Throughout junior year, my mentor or my PI just offered me to stay in the lab and be an intern there. So what I did was I just went to the lab um, every break that I could, like Thanksgiving break, winter break, minimum days, and the non-instructional days that I had. Um, I also went at the end of every single week, like Fridays, for like a couple of hours um, just to help out in the lab with anything they need um, because it adds experience on my part for labs and then as well as try to make some progress on the project that I was previously working on. After that junior year, I immediately applied to another summer program. I also had the same benefits like doing your own research project, presenting, uh, making a poster, presenting it at the public poster session. And then um, I also had a couple of networking events, so it wasn't all work, it was fun too. So I think it's definitely helpful to get an internship because it definitely shows you different types of exposures and experiences. It kind of guides you like where you actually want to go and what major you really want to study in. It gives you an idea of like what career you really want to pursue in the future. Not only that, but like it's really helpful for college applications because that experience can be included in your essays and there's just a lot of things that you can talk about in there as well. The biggest tip and takeaway from here is pursuing a specific strength or a specific interest and passion you have. Um, for me, it was engineering, it was STEM, it was science. Um, doing the science fair 
projects with like my partners, expanding what engineering club could do, making the annual science fair for like my school an actual event, founding a science Olympiad team, as well as like having that lab internship with me. I think those are very big pointers of like how I developed my spike and like my expertise in like what I'm truly passionate about. Try to not be the jack of all trades. Don't like, of course, freshman year, you can try everything and try to see which niche you're more suitable and like the best at or you're most interested in. Over time, try to drop the things that you're not as good at or you're not as interested in and really hone your interest and show your interest, show your passions through the things that you do outside of high school, through the things that you do in your community, in clubs, in like internships and things like that because those can really like shape how your essays are going to be written. This video is running very long again. Um, sorry, it's my second video, second time recording. And my college reveal, I don't have my shirt with me, just a minute. I will be attending UC Berkeley next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited and pretty happy with the choice that I made. It really came down to between um, Harvey Mudd and UC Berkeley. I went to the overnight program to Harvey Mudd. I didn't think it was like suitable for me, especially there, but UC Berkeley just had a lot of spirit. I went to their overnight and it seemed really nice and everyone was super friendly there and very supportive of everyone, like despite the reputation of like being very cutthroat. Woo! Go bear! <laughs> okay, so if you guys have any other questions, definitely leave it in the comments below as always. And I'll try to see, um, because I know it's like almost, well, it's technically like college app season kind of already. Let me know if like you guys have any questions about college essays and college app tips and things like that, how to navigate Common App. If you haven't seen my previous video of my college reactions, definitely go watch that. Um, and yeah, I'll see you next time.